I've made and hunted with stone points for well over 20 years, and I've taken a number of game animals with them. But during that time, I've also shot a lot and missed a lot. And whenever I can, I always try to recover those broken stone points and just put them in a case. They're just neat little keepsakes. But I never knew that one day I'd be looking at those points and I would realize that they would give me insight into decoding how ancient stone tools were used. Let's look at some points and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is my case of stone hunting points that were shot and broken during various hunts. Many of these points look exactly like the authentic artifacts you find scattered across the landscape. All of these points missed their intended targets and hit dirt, trees, or rocks. These are just the ones I recovered. Some were lost, and some were pulverized when they smashed into rocks at high speed. Some of them are fragmented. Some simply snap in half and some display the distinct impact fractures that indicate they were shot. Sometimes they will even split in half like this example, creating almost mirror images of each side. This all happened when I was looking at my old points that I'd been hunting with, and then I just happened to go and look at my artifacts right afterwards. And lo and behold, I started to notice that a lot of the artifacts had the same breakage pattern as my personal hunting points that I had used. And the more I looked, the more I found. These are known as impact fractures and they create, they're created when an arrowhead strikes a hard target, either a bone or if they miss a tree or a rock, and it can fracture the point in a very distinctive way. One of the ways is it'll knock a flake from the tip towards the base. Looks just like a flute on a paleo point only it's in the opposite direction the other thing that they will do is sometimes it will cause a burinating fracture where the the angle of force will actually shear the edge off of the stone point and leave a a square edge there instead of that sharp jagged napped edge and i've seen these on a number of points and a number of my points have also exhibited these as well i've got two really good examples here of the impact fractures i was talking about one is this little black flint point. This one I actually shot into a dead deer to test the penetration of these small points. And then this was another one that missed and hit a rock. And you'll notice that they have really good classic examples of impact fractures where the flake takes, is removed from the tip and it travels towards the base. Some of them can be short and choppy, but other ones like these two will come off nice and clean. They look like a reverse paleo flute. They're really cool looking. Now here are two authentic obsidian artifacts. These are both authentic, prehistoric, that exhibit the same type of impact fracture I was just showing on my modern points. The one on the left you can see has that reverse looking flute and you can see where the concentric rings radiate outward from the force from the source of the energy of the impact just like ripples in a pond that's how you can tell the direction of the, the that the energy was applied to the stone the other one to the right also has that classic reverse flute impact fracture but then it also has a burinated edge as well so it sheared off that edge and created that square edge and those are two really common impact fractures that you'll see. Now here's another artifact with an impact fracture. This is quartz. This is a quartz dart point that came from Virginia. I found this on my grandparents farm many years ago. It's a little more difficult to see the impact fracture on this one due to the nature of the material. But if you look closely you can see a crushed forward edge on that. The tip has been crushed off and there are some flakes that are traveling backwards towards the base from the tip. They didn't go very far, and there's some step fractures visible there. But if you look closely, you can certainly see it. Now this little point came from North Georgia. It's really small. There isn't much left of it. But you can tell this is the tip of what could have been an arrow point or even possibly a dart point. If you look closely, you can see that classic impact fracture on the tip with the radiating rings uh, radiating outward from the tip showing that this thing was thrown or shot into something at a very high rate of speed and it hit something hard. Although it's small, you can still see that impact fracture. 
Here's another quartz dart point. This came from eastern Georgia over near Athens. And although it's difficult to tell, if you look closely, you can see an impact fracture flake that was removed. And it's kind of a triangular shape, but it did, was detached from the tip and headed towards the base and created a little bit of a step fracture there. If you look at it in the light, in the right angle of the sun, you can definitely see that impact fracture. So this thing was probably thrown or shot at something an untold number of years ago. Here's another dart point from North Georgia made out of some cruddy, grainy, black chert. But if you look, there's that impact fracture on the tip, that classic reverse flute. This one didn't go very far either. You can see it's got a step fracture to it, but this thing was obviously a dart point and thrown at something. Now, whether or not that hit its target, it's hard to say. I surmise that maybe he didn't due to the amount of damage that this point uh, incurred, but he could have hit this target. And on the other side of the planet, I've got two little sub-Saharan African arrow points. Look closely on these and you'll see that they both also have impact fractures on the tips. Not really significant heavy impact fractures, but if you look closely, they're there. Now I also wanted to show you guys this. This is one of my cases with points that I made kills with. Every one of these points made a kill and the game was recovered. The one thing I want you to notice is that you'll see that there really, for the most part, isn't that much damage on these points. Oftentimes, it might have a ding off of the tip or a corner might get chipped off, but for the most part, the soft organs and tissue of a deer or other game animal really doesn't do much damage to the stone points. It's when you miss and you hit trees or rocks that they really tend to incur a lot heavier damage. And that just goes to show you that these stone points can be incredibly robust if you hit your target and they can be reused several times. It's amazing. Sometimes even ones that I've missed game and the arrow has dug itself into the dirt as long as it doesn't slam into a rock, those points are often reusable again. Maybe just re-chip the tip and, the sharp and resharpen the edges and that's all you need to do. And then that point's ready to be used again. But this is just an example of some of the points that I've made kills with and we'll show you just how durable and deadly they actually are. If you've got any stone arrow points or spearheads in your collection and have never examined them for impact fractures, I suggest you do it. Use what I've shown on this video to see if you can find those telltale signs that indicate that that spear point or arrow point was actually thrown or shot at game. It's really fascinating to be able to read that in the stone and it's just another depth in the story of that artifact.